the VW Golf R is one of the original super hatches. You know, before this came along, there were always hot hatches, front wheel drive, decent power, but you know, nothing crazy. Whereas when this came out, four wheel drive, V6, and lots of power. I do admire Volkswagen for continuing that formula today. So now it's a bit bigger, a bit heavier, but more powerful and more capable. It still looks pretty conservative on the outside, very neat proportions. You can only just tell that it's a very high performance model. And I kind of like that, it's got a bit of subtlety to it, it's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. But on the other hand, you could say it blends in a bit too much maybe. I mean it does have 19 inch wheels, a pretty big spoiler at the back, and then the trademark separated twin exhaust at the back, or quad outlet pipes in this case. But more importantly, it's still very practical inside. It's very spacious, got nice big pockets in the doors, plenty of storage around the center console, a center armrest, and decent space in the back. I mean, the big sports seats in the front do take up some room, but in general, it's, it's not too bad for a hatchback of this size. It's got climate vents in the back as well. And in the back, you've got a decent sized boot, 374 liters. Yeah, it's still a very practical vehicle. I'm not a huge fan of this touchscreen system and I don't like the way the climate control buttons down here, you know, they've got the temperature adjustment and that's kind of it. I'd rather have some more options down here, like the aircon button. Um, and also these don't really light up very well at night time. So if you're driving at night and you want to try and turn the heat up or something, you've got to actually really fiddle around. This touchscreen, it does have awesome graphics, but it is a little bit fiddly as well. So if you want to turn the stop start off, go into vehicle and then you've got to make sure you've got it on status and not the vehicle setting. And then you can turn the stop start off. There is a drop down menu bar here um, that's got it there as well. But yeah, again, it'd be nice just to have that as a separate button to turn that off. Likewise, if you want us to turn the stability control off because you know, you might be a bit of a driving enthusiast. You've just bought a car that does 0 to 104.8 seconds claimed. Uh, to do that, you've got to go into interior, uh, sorry, exterior, brakes, and then you can activate it or deactivate it from there. So yeah, it's just a little bit fiddly in terms of the menu flow. It doesn't seem as intuitive as it could. But I do like the grid layer of apps there when you push the home button. Despite being a super hatch, it's very quick. It's comfortable too, it's not bone jarringly stiff. I can drive on a country road like this, it's got lots of you know patchwork and all sorts of stuff all over the top. And it's fine, it's not jiggling me about at all, it's staying very solid, it feels very refined. Like over here, got some pretty bad patchwork, even on the corner, and it's just soaking up the bumps really nicely. I've got it in sport mode at the moment, you just hit the mode button down here. It actually starts up in sport mode, which is interesting. You've also got a comfort mode if you want to just relax. That was very convenient that the tarmac just turned to a very smooth surface. But yeah, it just becomes a bit more comfortable, a bit more relaxed. The throttle is not so sensitive. Not that it's that sensitive anyway, but if you really want to do some sporty driving, you've got the race mode. You've also got a drift mode as well, or a Nürburgring special mode. And it turns it into a uh, just a much more serious vehicle. I like that you've got a few different options for the display on the right. So you've got a G meter, you've got your fuel consumption, your acceleration and torque. But I like seeing the, the charge pressure. So Sorry, I'm not sure if that sun's in your face. You've got your charge pressure. I've seen it peak at about 2.3 bar, which is pretty crazy. That's 14.6. Uh, PSI per bar, so that's well over 30 PSI of boost. It's pretty nuts. Uh, it does have paddle shifters, so you can use it as a manual mode, but it will upshift by itself if you don't upshift. I'll just show you. That's without me changing gear, so it won't actually bounce off, bounce off the rev limiter. Not that it matters too much, but if you are on a track or something like that, you don't want it to be upshifting when you are when you don't want it to, because you know you might come up to a corner, might be right at the peak of being able to, uh, to to hit the red line, and then you've got a corner, so you don't want it to upshift into fourth, for example. Then you're straight away you've got to go back to down to third and then second. So originally you might just go from third back to second. But yeah, awesome performance, 
awesome grip as well it just punches away that's not as loud as it used to be but that's just emissions laws and all that sort of thing doing that Gearbox is awesome as well, dual clutch, it's a 7 speed, it's a bit more, a bit more of a uh, modern version of Volkswagen's DSG, it's not as clunky as the previous uh, versions of this transmission, it's definitely a lot more refined. I guess the good thing about this car is, it is ridiculously fast but yet so friendly, like it's not intimidating to drive. If you could, you know, think about some other cars that did 0 to 100 in a claimed 4.8 seconds, most of them are pretty serious cars and you know, you've got to have a bit of wits about you, you've got to have a bit of driving skill. Whereas this, I'm not saying you don't have to be, you know, not very good at driving, but you can enjoy this and enjoy the performance on a track or whatever, or even on a mountain road and not be going ridiculously fast, but still in very controlled manner because of that all-wheel drive system and just the way it is just like a normal golf it's not yeah as i said it doesn't have rigid suspension doesn't have a complicated or it is compli complicated but you know drive system that's that might kick the tail out unexpectedly or something like that it's just all very sure-footed and controlled but still ridiculously fast all right let's head out to the private road now and do some performance testing and see what it goes like